So moving on to the next portion of the transmitter, uh, we've got the double balance mixer and the RF combiner, which is, uh, here's the double balance mixer here on the diagram and here's the RF combiner. So the double balance mixer's purpose is to take the I and the Q audio signals that are generated by the audio phase shift component we looked at in the last video, and then to uh, mix each path separately with the 90 and zero local oscillator frequencies at the transmit frequency. Once we've mixed those two I and Q signals with the local oscillator running at the transmit frequency, they're then recombined in the RF combiner. And then out of the RF combiner, you'll get either the upper or lower sideband, depending on the order of these two and the order of these two. The RF signal then passes typically through an amplifier, then through some form of low pass filter to uh, filter out uh, the harmonics of the signal, and then finally out through the antenna. So there are many, many, many different types of uh, mixes that can be used. I thought what would be interesting is to build up a few different ones uh, and compare the results. So the three I'm gonna build up are a uh, double balance mixer using an SBL1, which is a uh, diode ring mixer, and that's this one over here. Uh, a double balance mixer using an ADEX10L, which is another diode ring mixer. And incidentally, uh, I'll include a link below to a great explanation of how a diode ring mixer works. Uh, and that's at uh, W2AEW's uh, uh, great channel. And then finally, there's an SA602 based uh, mixer that I have here. Uh, the SA602 SA is a very common, or at least it used to be very common, uh, IC based uh, RF mixer. And I'll, in I'll include uh, uh, on the, um, uh, the video also links to all these circuits up on uh, my GitHub repo. So let's start with the, uh, uh, the SBL based uh, uh, mixer. So the structure of the circuit is that these two inputs here are for the local oscillator frequencies at 0 and 90 degrees, or 90 and 0, depending on uh, the choice there. And uh, I'll be taking those uh, from, um, as usual, the uh, SI5351, which is controlled by the, uh, in this case, a Pi board running micro, micro Python. Here is the input from, uh, the I, from the audio phase shift network. So this is a stereo jack, and on one channel I have the I signal, the other channel I have the Q signal. So here is the, uh, uh, the circuit diagram for the SBL-based mixer, and let me just zoom in a bit, that uh, might be a little bit tough to see. So here's the two SBLs here, here's, uh, here's the input here, for the I and the Q channels. Then here is uh, the local oscillator signals coming in here and here. And then fi finally, the, the RF combining is done by this uh, so-called magic T uh, configuration of a, a T3743 transformer. And I'll include a link to an explanation of this, uh, but you'll see this uh, transformer repeated across all these circuits. Um, here it is. Uh, so here it is uh, right here for the, um, for the SBL based mixer. Now I've used a, a, a T37, uh, sorry, this is a T5043 here, and I've used a T5043 in the, um, uh, also in the uh, ADEX uh, mixer, and then in the uh, SA602 uh, mixer I've used a T3743. But in any case, the configuration of those is exactly the same. Okay, so here's the uh, SBL mixer hooked up. And uh, what I thought would be interesting to start with is just with one LO input and one audio frequency coming in from my signal generator. So the setup here, I've got, I've got a one kilohertz signal just on the I channel coming in here. I've got one uh, uh, LO input um, and that's at a frequency of uh, 7.000133 megahertz, uh, a little bit off there. And let's see what the uh, output is uh, starting with the, with the uh, spectrum analyzer. 
So you can see here that's the classic uh, double sideband um, uh, response there. I've got LO plus the uh, audio frequency. Let's go to that. Uh, let's go to that peak. So there's LO plus the audio frequency there, 7.001 and a bit megahertz. And I've also got LO minus the frequency here. So let's go to that peak. There it is, 6.999147 megahertz. And then way down there in the middle there is the LO frequency itself, 7.000133 megahertz. So that's the classic double side sideband no carrier output. Uh, let's look at that uh, on the oscilloscope and see what it looks like. And here's the signal uh, on the oscilloscope. Um, now this is the actual uh, at the audio frequency here, but if we drill in, we'll see that underlying RF signal there. So there's the audio signal, double sideband audio signal, and then here is the uh, the underlying RF signal underneath that. Okay, so now let's hook up two one kilohertz audio signals coming from my signal generator here and here. But now these guys are both in quadrature, so they're 1 kilohertz signals, 90 degrees out of phase with one another. And on the LO side, I've connected both of the LO inputs here, uh, again, 90 degrees out of phase with one another. So if we pan up to the uh, spectrum analyzer, now you can see that uh, the, in this case, upper sideband signal, which is right here, is being suppressed. So here's the lower sideband signal, here's our carrier frequency, and here's the upper sideband signal. So I can swap that around by just swapping the LO around. So I'll swap the LO around. There we are back to our double sideband. Now I've swapped the LOs around, and you can see now here's the original lower sideband signal that was, uh, that was in the in, 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 previously. Here's the carrier, and now here's the upper sideband signal. And that was achieved just by swapping the LO connections around. I can do the same thing on the audio input too. So let me swap the audio signals around. And be careful to keep the, uh, keep the leads away from one another. Um, so I've swapped the audio signals around. And now you can see we're back to the lower sideband signal. So let me swap them back again. These are the audio leads this time. And there we are, back to the upper sideband signal. So I can achieve sideband suppression there by either swapping the LO signals or by swapping the audio signals. Uh, and there are strengths and weaknesses of, of doing either of those. One thing you will notice is the uh, carrier frequency itself is higher than it was when we uh, just had that single LO frequency. I, I think what that is, is uh, I think I've got an imbalance between the two LOs. Uh, the level of those two LOs uh, are, are different in some way. Uh, that's, my, uh, that's my suspicion. Um, I haven't been able to... Uh, I haven't been able to drop that uh, that carrier frequency. But in any case, let's have a look at the uh, the output on the oscilloscope now. And you can see it's a, it's a bit of a mess. Um, now this is uh, one division is uh, one division is uh, half a millisecond. So here's the uh, the actual trace here. Let me just get it off run stop so you can actually see it. And I'm going to have to plug the output into the oscilloscope. Bear with me. So there's that, uh, there's that uh, view there. Let me see if I can get that. Uh, there we go, and I'll hit run stop. So, so basically on this one I've got one milliseconds per division, and let me, uh, now it's up to one millisecond is two divisions, and you can see there there's a complete waveform in two divisions. So here's our one kilohertz uh, signal recovered there. 
So let's try that exact same experiment, but in this case using the 8X10L uh, here. And let, let me just zoom into this. Um, so I'm a big fan of uh, SMD components. Uh, I got a, a reflow, uh, hot, a hot air gun a while back, and I've been having a lot of fun. So uh, the SBL1 is a, uh, is a through-hole component. This is uh, also a diode ring mixer uh, with a similar frequency coverage to the SBL10. Um, the other thing is SBL10, uh, sorry, SBL1, I meant to say. SBL1s are, are, are expensive, um, even on eBay. Uh, used uh, SBL1s are, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks a piece. I, I lucked out and got a few uh, for about five bucks a piece, but I've never been able to find uh I've never been able to find any any more at that price. So uh, I bought these off mini circuits. So the, these are the real deal, um, and uh, they were about two two dollars ninety five. I actually did get twenty of them, so uh, it was it was quite an expenditure. But uh, two dollars ninety five for twenty um, that's a lot better than getting used ones off e use SBLs off e eBay for uh, quite a bit more than that. But anyway, let's. Uh, Turn up to the uh, the spectrum analyzer and just see what we've got output here. So this is the same. All the uh, audio signals are exactly the same. And you can see here, uh, this is um, the double sideband um, that we saw before. So let's uh, plug in what, uh, the other LO and the other audio frequency. The other audio signal, I should say. So let's plug that LO in. See, notice the uh, carrier goes right up when I plug the other LO in. That really tells me that uh, there's some kind of uh, there's some kind of uh, discrepancy between the two L's with LOs, which is causing that. Uh, that's my theory, anyway. If, if anyone knows better, please tell me. And then this is uh, plugging in the. Um, both the 90 degree out of phase audio signals as well as the 90 degree out of phase LO signals. So you can hit see again, this is the upper sideband, here's the carrier, and here's the lower sideband. But interestingly, notice some of these other either harmonics or mixing products that are appearing here. Um, now they're way down that, so that's, uh, let's just move over and we can see that one. Let's go to the peak, uh, go left, left left so that's down at minus 82 dBm this is down at minus 73 dBm but they are indeed there and you can see those peaks will go up as I increase the uh, the amplitude of the see as I raise the amplitude of the audio signal those peaks on either side are going up uh, and that is splattering across uh, and obviously this is intended to go to a transmitter that is splattering across the uh, uh, you know the frequency there uh, but in any case so that's the upper sideband and let me do the same thing I'll swap around the audio signals and we'll see what uh, what happens there bear with and there we have the lower sideband um, and you can also see that the upper sideband isn't as suppressed as we had with the uh, with the SBL1. So anyway, it's just comparing and contrasting those two. So let's uh, let's have a look at that on the oscilloscope. Moving over to the uh, the oscilloscope, and we'll uh, reconnect that. Get it out of. Bear with me. So there's the uh, there's the signal, and, and again, this is uh, where well, you saw it on the uh, on the oscilloscope. There, that is uh, one millisecond one millisecond of division, and you can see uh, it's it's kind of a rough uh, a rough trace there. But uh, if we look between here and here, you can see that there's a full three sixty degrees of the signal there. So that's uh, basically uh, the, those two diode ring mixers. Um, like I said, I also included a, a link to an SA602 based mixer. Uh, and that is, uh, 
not quite as good as uh, as the uh, either the SBL or the ADEX. Uh, so we'll look at that next. And so here finally is the uh, SA602 version of the double balance mixer. Uh, so here's the two SA2, uh, SA602 mixers here. Uh, I've got some impedance matching transformers at the output of the of these two guys uh, to match to 50 ohms and then that goes into the RF combiner as as is the case in the uh, so this is a T3743 not like the uh, T5043s uh, in the other two. Uh, same setup though here's the two LO inputs here's the audio input here um, so let's just pan up in the uh, and see what we see what we can see on the uh, on the uh, signal analyzer and you can see there I've actually got it on the um, is that focusing that's not focusing too well but anyway so here's the uh, in this case the upper sideband signal here's the carrier and then here's the lower sideband signal so you can notice a couple of things one is the uh, other sideband suppression doesn't seem to be as good there's a lot of other mixing products as well so this is each one of these divisions is uh, is one kilohertz let's just change the frequency of the uh, of the uh, signal generator here and you can see those those go apart so here's the carrier frequency here let's just get it get the peak there so this is now two kilohertz here's the carrier uh, here's the carrier frequency here here's the two kilohertz upper sideband two kilohertz lower sideband you can see the suppression is, is nowhere near as good there. So if I go, so that's four, minus 40 dBm, minus 57 dBm. So that's with using the SA602. And uh, the SA602, there's, it, it, it's, a fine, uh, it, it, it's a fine mixer to, uh, to play around with. But as you can see, it's, it doesn't do as good a job as those two previous diode ring mixers. Uh, so I'll do the same thing. Let me swap around the um, the LO here. So you can see now we'll, we have the lower sideband. So let's go uh, off to the left there. You can see there minus 40 dBm is the lower sideband going right. Minus 56. So we got around about 50, 17 dBs of, uh, of suppression there between the upper and lower sideband. And then we have the, the carrier frequency itself is, is way down there. Um, so anyway, that's the, uh, they're the three uh, double balance mixers that I thought I'd uh, compare and contrast. Um, I won't actually hook these up to the, um, uh, to the phase shift that I built in the previous video. I'll, I'll do that in a subsequent video. Uh, I thought it'd be good to just test these uh, double balance mixers out of circuit and see what they look like. Um, and... Uh, that's a, uh, a wrap in this video for now.